is not important to me. Money is what they give you. It's serendipity. You get it, you know, as, a, as an adjunct to fame. Uh, I do what I do, and I enjoy doing what I do, and I do it very well indeed. And as a consequence, they give me a lot of money for it. So money has no meaning for me. I take it, and I spend it, and I give it to people, and I do what I have to do with it, and that's, that's what money's for. Uh, money is not what my fix is, man. My, my fix is in terms of personal freedom and being allowed to create what I want to create when I want to create it, and nobody telling me what to do or where to go, and in being mildly famous. I mean, you know, I'm sitting here and talking to you. And I'm impressed. And, and, well, you should be. I'm a terrific human being. Sure Snappy dresser, good dancer, credit to my race. I've never danced, didn't you? Uh, well, all right, I've heard you, again, I've heard you talk on uh, the process of uh, writing for uh, the medium of television. And uh, it seems that every time I hear you, you stress the dichotomy. It, it almost seems as if you have a love-hate relationship for the two. It's precisely, precisely what I have. Well, it's more a hate-hate relationship, but it, there's a little love there. I, I like what television can do when it's good. But it's so seldom good. It so seldom permits you to be as good as you can be. And that inhibits me. That holds me back. I can't be turned loose. No writer can be turned loose. And I resent, I resent the loss of things that I, would, that I would be enjoying seeing. People who watch television, every one of you who watches the box, you're taking crap. You don't know that you could be having much better. You don't have to keep eating toad burgers. You can have filet on the pig. And they just don't, they don't seem to know. They take whatever is thrown at them. Each season, they bring in 12, 15 new series that die within weeks. And no one seems to perceive that there's something wrong, that they cannot create anything that has any staying power. How can the public change it right now? A normal guy sitting at home watching this show who doesn't like it, or who turns to one of the commercial stations and watches He can go out and get 10 of his friends and have each of those 10 friends get 10 of their friends and each of them write a letter and say, I don't want to see this anymore. I want to see something that will be meaningful and interesting. Give them a for instance, whatever it is that, that they may want to see. see. It's not the kind of world where I should say we should all be watching Remembrance of Things Past, that we all need proofs to make us better people. We need an hour of Camus each week. Or Thurber. Or Thurber. There are people, there are people who, who prefer Gilligan's Island. They should, they should be entitled to have it. I'm not saying that you should kill all of that crap. There should be that crap there, too. People need crap from time to time. I mean, it, it, it helps, you know, it helps leaven the, 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 the mix. But they should also have the opportunity, if they don't want to see crap, to be able to turn to something else that, 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 that ennobles them a little more. And you, can, you haven't got that option. All I ask for are the options. And that's what people watching, who would, you know, sitting at home right now, say, okay, I want some options. Decide what your options are. Decide what it is you really want. If you really want Charlie's Angels, if you really want Starsky and Hutch, if you really want I Dream of Jeannie rerun, then just... You know, that's cool. Let's give you a little bit of scope and say that uh, tomorrow some uh, uh, unnamed executive from the uh, West Coast called up and said, Harlan, uh, we're giving you your own network, the Harlan Ellison Network. Mm. How would you program it? Well, first of all, I would do away with arbitrary time limitations on shows. There wouldn't be no more shows that were an hour in length or a half an hour in length. They would be 40 minutes, 52 minutes, uh, three and a half hours, if that's what it took to tell the story. I would begin programming... Uh, Drama, serious drama, good drama, Greek drama done in, uh, in, uh, in contemporary settings. I would put Oedipus on and see how the people who think Mary Hartman is, uh, is uh, uh, very daring, how they would respond to that, you know. Uh, I, would, I would send out crews to do documentaries on investigative journalism basis. Uh, I would get people like, uh, uh, I don't know, American Nazis, get them on, let them speak. And then I would confront them with people who had lost their families in Nazi prison camps. Uh, I, would, uh, I would have the best comedy writers write things that were a little tricky. Um, I would do real news shows, real news in depth. For each story, there would be a 15 minute or a half an hour in depth background on it. I would get all the independent filmmakers who were around this country doing documentaries, and I would buy them all up from them, and I would show them. I would have hours of animated films from Europe, the way they do on PBS with the International Animation Festival. Um, some of the things I would do. How do you think we'd compete? I think, I think, it'd be, I think we'd, we'd clean up, man. I mean, th they told Norman, the, uh, Norman Lear, that uh, Mary Hartman was not going to make it. No one would touch it. The networks wouldn't go near it. Oh, are they eating their hearts out now? Don't they wish they had it? Um, people picked up on Saturday Night Live very quickly. And, of course, it immediately went bland the minute that... that well, it's not even showing services, I don't like that. Yeah. 
I think the, I think whatever network I had programming that way would clean up. We might have some shows that would lose money. So what? So what? Let the other ones support it. Let the ones that are successful get it. That's how publishers do it. Publishers publish unknown writers, first novelists, and support them by Irving Wallace uh, making money and uh, and uh, Jaws making money and Jacqueline Suzanne. They publish the crap which permits them to publish the good stuff. You think part of the problem with American uh, commercial TV is the fact that one, one, Excuse me, one way, I would bring back a lot of series. I would bring back the James Thurber series, My World and Welcome mm -hmm. to It. I would bring back uh, The Prisoner. I would bring back uh, uh, It's a Man's World, which is a series about the three kids on the, on the houseboat on yeah. the Ohio River. It was a marvelous series. I would go back and I would find all those really good shows, The Law and Mr. Jones. I would give James Whitmore all the time he wanted to act. Um, I, would, I would start a, a stock company of really terrific actors, the kind that every time you see these, oh, yeah, guys like Bruce Dern and, and uh, uh, Struther Martin and people like that, and I would provide for them young playwrights who would write contemporary drama. Uh, oh, God, the things I would do, the things I would do. We could go on for hours, I'm sure. Yeah. Do you think part of the problem with uh, commercial TV is the fact that it is commercial? Absolutely. That's at the core of it. What do you think then about the prospect for uh, the medium if it went to, say, something like pay TV? I would say it would be probably a little better, not appreciably better, because you would still, people would still be competing, and they would compete again. They would compete at the lowest possible level. You would have a lot of things like Jaws and uh, uh, Funny Girl, and you would have a lot less of things like The Homecoming or The Conversation or Taxi Driver. As long as you got to compete for the buck, you're going to have to. You, people are going to. People are going to mellow out. Mm -hmm. I understand. I want to get in before we, our time is running a little short. I want to get into uh, another area completely. Uh, to uh, most of the people in the country that know you, you are still uh, an author who specializes in speculative fiction, in spite of the fact that you become a TV critic now and a very good one. Uh, I fish. I get any place. Well, actually, I'm a, I guess. I guess if you need a category for me, I'm a, I'm a fantasist. I mean, the, my work is closer in tone to Kafka or Poe or Borges, uh, Jorge Luis Borges, who is probably known around Syracuse as George Luis Borges, um, than it is to any science fiction writer. I mean, there's very little relationship to my work, uh, between my work and, say, Isaac Asimov's or Arthur Clarke's or Frank Herbert. Uh, we just do different kinds of things. I'm lumped in there with them because I write fantasy, because I got my start in the science fiction medium, because I was a fan. And I didn't know any better, and I wrote some of that at the time. But my my current book, Death Bird Stories, is nothing but pure fantasy. How does how does a person uh, decide? How did you decide when you were young that this is what you're going to write? Instead of saying you're going to write biographies or fiction, or uh, well, I've done all of them. I mean, I've got 31 books out, and only about maybe less than a half is fantasy. I've got. Uh, Three books of uh, stories and a novel about juvenile delinquency, an autobiography about prisons, two books of television criticism, a mainstream novel about uh, the rock idiom, uh, a, a book of mystery stories. Uh, I've written everything. I write interviews. I write book reviews for the LA Times. Uh, I've written, you know, columns of personal observation. And in between that, all you find time for interviews such as this. Um, I'm really impressed. I'm gonna let you know. No, no, no. I was rambling on and you're cutting me off, which is what you do. No, I shouldn't do that. But I want to get into uh, speculative fiction right now for a moment, uh, fantasy, science fiction. I know in your books you tend to use the term speculative fiction more often than science fiction. Yeah, well, that's a phase that's gone now, so I don't even use that. I won't have SF on my books anywhere, no matter what it means, because I don't write it. Uh, I think categories and labels are terrible things. They lump a great many different kinds of people in together. I mean, when you stop to think they call science fiction, an art form that ranges from one end with Edgar Rice Burroughs and Tolkien and uh, uh, Lynn Carter and his Thongor at the Mound of Venus books, all the way to the other end with Vonnegut and John Fowles and Nabokov. Uh, it's a phrase that doesn't mean anything. It's mumbo jumbo. It's just a handy kind of tag for newsstand dealers or academicians or librarians. So they can shove all these books with the funny covers over here and all the nurse novels over here and all the westerns over there. Regardless of how you tag it, though, it's, it's uh, found that it's extremely popular now. It's increasing in popularity. What, science fiction or my work? Uh, well, both. Okay. Uh, particularly your work. How do you account for this? Um, 
Well, I think a, a particular writer becomes popular because his time comes or her time comes. Uh, the things I'm saying now, I think, deal with society in an interesting way. I take the mirror of fantasy and use it to turn reality slightly so you can look at the situation, whatever it may be that's going down or the philosophical concept, and, and examine it in a new way. Uh, why science fiction is more popular is, I suppose, because uh, the accepted, ordered 